today's episode of the Brains Bite Back podcast, we are joined by Dan Burgess, Managing Director and Founder of Burgess Institute, an online Spanish language school for adults headquartered in New York City. In today's episode, you will learn how the Burgess Institute first started, how learning a new language can enhance memory and cognitive abilities, alongside how it can also delay Alzheimer's symptoms and boost brain health. Additionally, Dan also shares advice for anyone who is interested in learning a new language. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. So I am one of the founders and the managing director at Burgess Institute. Uh, Burgess Institute is a Spanish language school for adults. Uh, we are headquartered in New York and uh, we do online live classes all over the world. Uh, before the pandemic, we were mostly an in-person school that we really started teaching online back in 2019. Um, but right now we are 100% online and we have a lot of students in the US and we also have some students outside of the US, like in the UK and Canada. Our school uses the graph method, which is our self-developed uh, method for teaching Spanish. It is a highly deductive method. Um, deductive means that we first teach the rules and then we practice them as opposed to an inductive method in rules first examples are seen and then the student is expected to infer the rules for, uh, from the examples. I think you covered a lot there. <laughs> and I, I'm really excited to have you on here because I think language is a quite, well, really interesting for me. I spent my teenage years in university time learning Japanese and I could speak it and write it quite well, although it's been about 10 years since I've dabbled in that. So everything feels like it's gone. That is until I hear something and then maybe I recognize the one word or so. And uh, I've spent some time and I speak Spanish as well um, as a language I'm super passionate about. And um, I am currently, I'm going to be going to Brazil soon uh, this year. So I'm trying to learn Portuguese as well. So this has really come at a fantastic time. Uh, so I'm very excited to speak with you, Dan. And I want to know, like, you touched on it slightly, but when and how did uh, Burgess Institute first start? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so Burgess Institute, we started in 2013. Uh, my business partner, Vanessa, and I opened a small studio in the Upper East Side. Uh, we developed uh, the method back then. And it started to become very popular, so eventually... Uh, we opened an actual school in Midtown with only two classrooms. And then it slowly grew, um, it grew organically through the years. Uh, eventually, before uh, the pandemic in 2019, we had 1,200 students. We had a school uh, in New York uh, with like four uh, spaces and a big school in Chicago. Um, and after, uh, during the pandemic, uh, we moved all of our students online. Uh, and that is where we are right now. Well, it sounds like you've grown a lot and really done some fantastic things so far. But I also want to know, can learning a new language enhance memory and cognitive abilities? And if so, can you please explain how? So, really, for sure, uh, but uh, most research shows that it improves uh, cognitive, uh, cognitive ability in general, also memory and also concentration. Uh, there are different theories. Uh, brains kind of show like an increase in density of gray matter and also an increase of white matter. Uh, brain is kind of there, like, they have limitations, right? They can only show like blood flow, which we associate with uh, neuron activity. Um, and I mean, we can talk about the, the research on Alzheimer's disease, um, the non in general, on how it can delay with the onset. Basically, the theories are about like uh, how learning a new language creates like alternative neural paths that not only work for the second language but that are also are also used in like general like, cognitive function. So it's basically like a redundancy circuit. Like to put it to uh, give you an analogy, like for example, planes have like secondary electrical circuits in case that the first one. Uh, something happens to it during a flight. So it is kind of like that. Um, and basically, uh, those alternative paths basically uh, enhance cognitive, fu cognitive function in general. 
Okay, great. I'm sorry, Dan. Would you be able to repeat the first half of that because it it broke up slightly? Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, uh, research shows that I learn a second language, whether it is uh, as as a child or as an adult, um, basically increases gray matter density and also increases white matter. I uh, really don't know what exactly that does because a brain scanners have some limitations. They can only show activity, but they cannot tell you exactly what those neurons firing are doing. Um, so the films are uh, basically speculate that learning a second language is creating like an alternative uh, neural circuit or alternative neural circuits in the brain that are also used for like general uh, executive function. So, um, from there, we can we can infer that learning a second language and creating those alternative circuits basically contribute to like generic cognitive abilities. That's amazing. It's quite incredible how learning a language changes or learning a language changes your brain. I myself sometimes after speaking Spanish for a bit, I'll then say things in English, which um don't really translate so obviously in spanish they say in este momento uh, and sometimes i'll say like in this moment and then i'm like wait i don't say that i just say now or right now um so even in the short term it really it's incredible like the impact it has on your brain um from my experience there but i'd like to know like can you also share the different ways like learning a new language can delay alzheimer's as well and symptoms or delay alzheimer's alzheimer's symptoms and boost brain health Mm -hmm. i'm sorry uh, so yeah, and delay is the key here because uh, studies show that it doesn't really prevent Alzheimer's, but it can delay the symptoms by quite a lot. Uh, so basically, there's been a lot of, of research on this, and uh, some research tried to show whether it actually prevents Alzheimer's, and the, the results were always negative. But the research I focused on the onset and like the development of the symptoms, it is pretty consistent in the fact that even controlling for all sorts of variables like educational background, etc., um, the average age of onset for Alzheimer's for people who are going to develop Alzheimer's um, is um, older than by even more people for people who who speak a second language, and this might. Uh, happened for up to five years, which is like quite a big deal. It's like a pretty dramatic effect. That is pretty dramatic. That's quite impressive. And it's funny because I actually remember hearing that I think it was like, I don't know, 50 years ago, 100 years ago, or something like that. They actually thought that being bilingual um, was a bad thing in the sense that you couldn't hold a capacity to speak really more more than one language. So I think children that were raised in maybe a household where they spoke one language like in the schools they were heavily discouraged from like continuing with that language so i think there was definitely a sense of like completely incorrect theories and ideas um and it's so fantastic to see that having this skill and ability can benefit you so much more than being able to communicate with a a wider group of people and obviously we've spoken so much about the benefits here of learning a second language or another language and for anyone who is listening and has decided, you know what, I I want to take this up, what advice do you have for them? And um, yeah, how can they get started with this? Well, yeah. So, I mean, my advice is that uh, learning a second language is a long-term process. So basically, like, my most important piece of advice would be to enjoy the process and to kind of like get obsessed with it for, for a few years to try to have as much exposure to the language as possible. Um, on top of that, I would recommend following a program, and in particular, I favor a deductive program. So our program is deductive, and many other programs are deductive. Inductive programs can work as well, but research shows that for adults, deductive programs can be faster and also reduce frustration. So my recommendation would be just to have a long-term plan in which you combine following a serious program, like taking classes and following a curriculum. And on top of that, having as much exposure to the language as possible in ways that you enjoy. So that could be like watching a lot of TV in your target language, uh, listening to podcasts and radio, 
eventual reading as much as possible that helps a lot and doing all those sorts of things are uh, trying to basically review uh, all different components of the language in many different ways uh, basically recent shows that um, recall and spacing are really good for memorization so that means basically thinking about the language and parts of the language often and uh, trying to give some space between studying sessions and basically doing that uh, for a few years will lead to uh, having like a pretty good level of fluency in the in the target language yeah i think those are some great pieces of uh, wisdom there and I have to say, to add to that, um, I think music's fantastic. I know you did mention about like podcasts and watching TV. Music can be great, although I find that music can be difficult. It's a double-edged sword. It's fantastic for learning things and like kind of understanding them in a very kind of like informal context. But also, it depends on the kind of music because a lot of the times, music doesn't always make sense. I mean, if you take some songs, the lyrics are just like gibberish. Uh, so where sometimes in the past, when I've tried to learn a language and i've just taken a song and i've asked an, a native speaker what does this mean and they're like i don't know this doesn't make sense uh, and i'm like how does it not make sense and then they point to rappers in english and i'm like you know what i understand like those rappers don't make any sense so it's yeah you just gotta be careful <laughs> yeah yeah absolutely mm -hmm. fantastic well you folks sound like you're doing some great things there uh and i want to know like what's on the horizon for you folks what's next at burgess institute mm-hmm yeah, so we are expanding to other markets. Um, like we've recently expanded into uh, the UK market, and we are also expanding now into the Indian market. Uh, on top of that, we are doing some research on AI and natural language processing. Uh, we launched a uh, Deep Spanish back in November, which is a chatbot service with uh, three different chatbots with three different personalities that help our students practice their Spanish and, and we're still doing more research like it's it's pretty early on but it is a hot topic right now like especially after the release of, of chat GPT so so far like deep Spanish has been our our only product it's still in beta but it's been very popular so far on top of that we are doing some other research with uh, machine learning and processing like pronunciation and we have uh, a few other projects in there that we are experimenting with. Um, yeah, that that is basically like what we have, uh, what we are doing these days. Fantastic. Well, it sounds like you got a lot going on. And if people do want to either learn Spanish with you uh, or just keep up with what you're doing, how can they do that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so they can uh, visit our website, businessinstitutespanish.com. And they can also Twitter us at, at Burgess Institute. And they can also go to our contact page and send us an email or email me directly at dan at burgessinstitute.com. Super. Well, we'll have links to those pages in the show notes uh, of this episode. But otherwise, Dan, thank you so much for joining me today. And uh, best of luck helping as many people as possible learn another language. Thank you, Sam. Thanks for having me. Growing a company has many hurdles, from securing funding to expanding your business capabilities to ranking better on search. Each business challenge is uniquely complex. The solution to these challenges is growth-focused digital PR and marketing, and that is where our sponsor, Publicize, comes in. Publicize sets itself apart from traditional PR companies. It does not charge large retainers or churns out press releases whether you've got a newsworthy announcement or not. Publicize builds businesses online presence and gets high quality PR and media coverage for startups and entrepreneurs who are priced out of a broken PR industry. What's more, listeners of Brainspike Back can find the tools and resources they need to overcome common hurdles that many startups face when trying to generate long term growth by visiting publicize.co slash BBB. That's publicize.co slash BBB.
That is it for today's episode. Thank you for joining us. I hope you've learned something. And if you have benefited from today's episode, please consider leaving us a review on iTunes or wherever you listen to your podcast, as these reviews really help us grow the show. You can also follow us wherever you get your podcasts, including YouTube. Just search Brain Spike back and you will find us. We hope you join us for more episodes in the future. And until then, take care. Disclosure, this episode contained a client and a Spacio portfolio company.